I, if, you know, if you know it, so you want to try without it, that's okay. Out every minute. No, my wife just had a cook. Ah, what'd, what'd she make? Huh? What'd she make? Um, what you would call General's chicken. Yeah, General's chicken. That's good. What would you call it? No, I mean, like, my wife will probably, would probably call it chicken with a certain sauce. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Is it like fried? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Is there a class I am actually thinking of having a field trip right after you say it. Do some place where we can spend the whole day studying. Yeah. Let me while I need you guys doing that. Yeah. 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 All right, Shrabi, your trail's here. All right, thank you, Angelo, for doing some trails. I appreciate it. Thank you, Hunter. Phillips curve. 
there a way for me to know that did I hit the recording thing? Yeah, 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 yeah I did. Okay, great. All right. So here's the first thing. Um, in a recession, a Phillips curve, you put an A anywhere to the right of the long run Phillips curve. All right. Remember in the set recession, high unemployment and the unemployment increase, lower inflation. <laughs> All right. This is the actual rate. When you put it here, it's the it's like what's happening now. When they ask you for expected inflation, this is the equilibrium for expected. I'm telling you this because sometimes in the FRQs, they'll say expected inflation 3%. So you would put here and you go across 3%. Then they say actual inflation 1%. That would be here. Okay, that's why these arrows are here showing you. All right. All right. Long run Phillips, short run Phillips curve. Tony, I know you've got this. The shifter of short run Phillips curve is. No, no. Shifter. I'm going to let Will the Thrill help you. No, I know you got it. No one. He gets to that hippocampus. You got it. No, I'm not a righty. I'm a lefty. That, that was a horrible tool on my phone. John, did you have to hear that? No, no. I'm going to come like, Miles, yeah, high five. No, we're close. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. The shift of the short run Phillips curve uh, is opposite SRAS. Now, John, though, he was a step ahead. John, if AD shifts to the right, what happens to this A here? Slides left, right? So we slide opposite of aggregate demand, we shift opposite of SRAS. If you would have got that on the slide, yeah, I'd like to that. I did. That, that's a total lie on my part. All right, Ben, they want to, to, you to draw an LRAS in a recession, right? So this is your recessionary. Um, LRAS curve. And look, it, this one should be easier for you because you're used to it. So if it's to the left of the LRAS, it's going to be to the right of the long run Phillips curve. Okay? The Phillips curve is just like it's a lot of opposites. That's right, it's going to left to right. But that was so hard. Okay? Any questions so far? No. You're good. Okay. All right. Now, no, I don't have it in front of me. What's the next thing they asked on that little? All right. So now let me ask you, do you think it's smart for the federal government to raise income taxes in this situation? No, because what's going to happen? Graphically. Which way? Left. We're going to get worse. All right. Now. Lorenzo, if demand shifts left, what's going to happen on the Phillips curve? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I'm going to go back to the Phillips curve so you can look at it. So it's going to slide right. Okay, so the A would be more like if they said put B, it would be down here. Okay, good job. What is this? How this? What is 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 this? Thought it's a good little review. We're going to review the Phillips curve a little more today. Don't worry. But before we do, here. Amen. God, please let us use this weather today and enjoy it and 
When you get in the last you set and get ready to learn more and start to answer the scan. Ready for us. Ready for us. All right. Um, so I'll be here today uh, after school to do redos um, there. Uh, Monday, uh, uh, tonight, right? Is this what you do tonight? No. Chapter 30, no, it's due, chapter 30. Monday, chapter 35. At three o'clock, I sent out, and I'll, I'll send out another if you mind. I will be like from 3 to 3.45 or 3 to 3.30. I will be online if you have any questions. The same as Sir Owen says, a question. He, he's confused about the shifters of the Phillips curve. He come on, ask me, and leave. It's not like you got to stay the half hour. You're in your house. You can just pop on, get any questions you have clarified, and pop off. Okay? Tuesday, I'll do a review before and after school. Add that 7.30 at night. Wednesday, we have the unit test. Okay? Um, and I have a breakdown that I'll get for you in a second. Uh, what? Did someone have something? Uh, I thought someone said. All right, here is the unit test. There's nine questions changing money. What do I mean by that? That is, punch a deposit in a thousand in the bank. How much does it change the money supply? Um, the Fed bought a $2,000 bond. They sold the bonds. Those are like nine. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Um, so all the things with shifting and changing money, there's two unreserved requirements, meaning like they show you a T balance and they ask you what the reserve requirement is. There's one on an actual balance sheet. All right, there's four questions like on interest rates, like aggregate demand goes up, price levels increase. What does that do to interest rates? Price levels increase. People need more money. Demand interest rates go up. Demand for money goes up. Um, there's two questions like asking you, we don't have to graph obviously, but asking you like what shifts the money supply graph. There's eight monetary policy. Okay. Can I just go through this and then? There's eight, no, there isn't, sorry. There's eight questions on monetary policy. Uh, what do I mean by that? It would be like, how do you fix an inflationary gap? How do you fix a recession? If the Fed buys bonds, what happens? Okay. There's three questions on that, that non for real plus inflation formula. Just plugging in. There's two on the inverse relationships between bonds and interest rates. Two on multiple funds, one on function of money. There it is. That equals more than 30, right, Will? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but there's only 30 questions. Sometimes, like, they have something that the change of money supply would affect, like, price levels and interest rates. So there's, like, a double thing. So I put it there. Okay. okay. All right. Yes, Tony. I'm going to do a breakdown on like the hardest practice questions and try to get a video of it. Okay. All right. You're up. Um, you do a full reserve requirement and just have a you know, money supply. What do you mean by open market again? Open market buying and selling bonds. Okay. You lower the reserve requirement to increase the money supply, you lower, you lower the discount rate. Right? And the SRS APL. Yes, those four. And like, Will, I'm not a betting man, but man, I don't see Phillips curve up here on multiple choice. Yeah, mm. so I would think that it's going to be a part two. No, it's 30. Some of them, Tony, like, like oh, they, use. They, they use both of the concepts. Okay. okay. All right, maybe I'll throw them 31st just to help you because I'm a nice guy. All right, so here was the feedback nine point. We go to 10 15, right? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, nine point one is um, what the rate. So people ask me about the Fisher effect. 
that the picture is that um all right so if you remember that nominal equals real plus inflation the fisher effect says in the long run real variables don't change so nominal really equals inflation so in the long run if nominal goes up one percent inflation is going up one percent because real variables don't change Cameron, give me the shifters of the Phillips curve. Uh, hold on. I'm holding. Uh, like a change in unemployment. Well, I guess that's, I guess, uh, like. You might be, you might not be understanding exactly what I'm asking. The truth, like, because I think you're trying to get deeper into it. Yeah. So the Phillips curve shifts opposite of SRAS AD what? What what's the effect on AD for the Phillips curve? No. Yeah. So you slide opposite of, of the average demand shift, you shift opposite of the SRAS. All right, quantity theory of money. All that says is when you increase the money supply, the value of money decreases. You increase the money supply, the value of money decreases. All right, I want to get into the surplus and deficit. Okay. Someone, um, <laughs> this is loanable funds. Surplus is going to do what? Going to shift savings right. Tony, if savings goes right, what happens to interest rates? Okay, Aiden, if interest rates go down, what happens to investment? If interest rates go down, the businesses want to borrow more or less money. Investment increases. All right, so this is surplus. Yes. So when you say investment, is that talking about the lender? Not like no, investment would be people want to borrow more and like build more factories, buy more equipment for their business. Okay. okay. All right. This is the deficit. What's going to shift? In which way? Peter. Okay, supply is going to shift to the left. Interest rates go up, right? Everyone's good on that. Wait, say that again. The, the, the original one, you're in a surplus. So what? Oh, it shifts back to the normal. Now, now, if it's a deficit, it's shifting left. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. That's the deficit. Got it. All right. Now, the third one. If government is running a deficit, but they want to spend more. What do they have to do? Well, I mean, increased taxes that would hurt because you're trying to ship Asia. So government spending would do what you? Government spending would shift demand to the right. Yeah, we could shift the demand to the right. Would that make it easy for whoever is higher if you're already running the deficit? Well, I, I mean, Take the deficit out for a second. Yeah, it's not going to help the deficit, but we don't need to look at it. All right. Is interest rates going up or down, Andrew? You started here, and now you're here. They're up, right? You shifted demand up. Okay. If interest rates are up, Andrew. What's going to happen to investment? Investment's going to decrease. All right. So now I'm moving here. All right. Now, when Luke first said government spending, government spending shifts AD to the right. Right? But Andrew just told me higher interest rates, investments down. If investment goes down, what do we call that? All right, that's crowding out. Crowding out effect. Stops business investment. All right. 
Say government surplus or government deficit to tip that it's the one of the fund. All right. Hunter, you can take your choice. You can tell me either about monetary or fiscal policy. Um, I'll do uh, on here. Yeah, on the balance by the Federal Reserve as well as the assets like increasing money supply. Um, what three things could do that? Um, Which one to increase money supply? Increase on selling bonds, so buying bonds. Um, then they could um, think broad. Um, are the uh, interest rates lower the discount rate? And what's the last one you all learned? Lower the reserve rate. Would you lower it or increase it to increase money supply? So you're lowering the discount, lowering reserve requirements and buying bonds. Fiscal policy, who can help me with fiscal policy? Will is real. And what are the two things that we talk about? Well, if you're going to do expansionary, what are the two things government does fiscally? And? Lower taxes and increase government. Lower taxes and shift the right, so government spending increase would shift to 80 to the right. And lowering taxes the same. But also shift it to the right. And the opposites obviously shift. All right, here we go. Did I give a spot on this on the Phillips curve on your thing? Currently draw the LRPC and that's it. the recessionary gap. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, precise that. We did? All right, Let, let's just do it because some of us, not you either, but like people like me, I need I need to redo it. Is there a such gap fixed itself? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we went all the way through it. That's why. Okay. Usually, like when you get into vulnerable funds, then I could ask you about that. All right, so we're gonna we're, we're in a recessionary gap, right? So we're gonna do a recessionary Phillips curve gap. Andrew's got it. He's feeling good about it. Yeah, you know how to do it. Cameron, think opposite. Let's do the opposite. Yeah, I mean, draw a Phillips curve with a long run thing. Okay. So, not here. Yeah. On the other side. Yeah. Yeah, except you have your Phillips curve. 
<laughs> All right. So there you are, right? We just happened to it. Now, Miles, who's usually a step and a half ahead of us, is thinking, how about if government doesn't intervene now? What happens? So Miles, at um, we shift the uh, curve to the right here. No, we just started as a recessionary gap. And now we're putting it right up to right because if it's left here, it's going to be right there. All right. Now Miles, at this, let's call it Q1. I'm making more or less product in Q1. Do I need more or less workers? Less workers. If the demand for workers goes down. What's going to happen to wages? Let's just do a quick rep. If the demand for goes down, what's going to happen to wages? They're going to go down. Wages go down, but shift. Supply to the right. So I would then take supply and shift it right. Correct? Yes. All right. If I'm shifting supply right here, why, what am I going to do with my long run Phillips curve? If I shift supply right in this graph, what am I going to do with the short run Phillips curve? Shift it to the left, okay? And then you get back to the long run on both of them, okay? So there and there. Okay. Any questions? Go well. So in the short run, the whole line shifts when that supply shifts on the long run. So again, I'm not sure I understand. When does the when does it shift the longer the curve and into the whole? Oh, like this whole curve shifted. Yeah. So then we shift here. It slides up and down the curve with backward demand shift. Oh okay. Lorenzo, you good? Don't worry to me. Okay. I'm a nice guy. If you have a question, I don't yell at anyone except for people. John? Sure. Real funny. <laughs> okay. Let's try to graph this. Assume expected inflation rate is 3%. You. You could refer if you jotted down where to put expected inflation rate in the first graph we did. The current employment rate is 6% and the natural rate for unemployment is 4%. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the short and long run Philip. Let's just do A first, okay? Let's just do A first. Did I put this in your notes or not? Yes, you did. If it's easier to draw a straight line, you could draw a straight line. You know what I mean? Trying to look up here, Luke, but I don't see 15 in any of this. Uh... <laughs> no, I, I'm just I'm that I have to the phone. So, how it's on the point of this is the natural rate of the right? Yeah, so the point. The current Okay, 
All right, Dan, you're gonna have to do some thinking now. Okay. All right. So here's I said before. This is the expected. All right. This is the uh, the natural. Okay. So the expected is always that equilibrium for inflation. The natural rate they said is six percent. They said four percent. So I'm going to put it here. Then I know that the actual six. So I'm going to put it here. Okay. Now. The actual is six. I know whatever this is the actual inflation. I don't have a number for it. But what is part B ask? Yeah, bigger or lower than three percent. All right. So then I know it's what? Lower, right? Okay. So how did you know to put the 3% on the inflation rate size? Oh, when it says expected, that's that equilibrium. Okay, so when it says actual, the actual is like, they would typically say the actual is 1% and unemployment is six, but since they wanted to get, ask you which was higher or lower, they kind of left this blank. But this is the actual unemployment, so I know it has to go here. Always. Okay. All right. What could someone read C to me? Uh, student loans were made taking into account the expected inflation rate of 3%. Will lenders be better off or worse off after they realize the actual inflation rate is identified in B? So if inflation rate goes down. Is that good for borrowers, Noah, lenders, or it doesn't matter? It's good for borrowers. Why? Think about it before you, I, well, everyone just think about it. Which is it better for borrowers, lenders, or it doesn't not matter? If it goes down. Yeah. Interest rates go down. I'm going to give everyone like 45 seconds. I know I put you on the spot. This is just, you said something, but I didn't have a reason because you had a big fair chance to sit down. Sam, what do you think? I don't know. Well, why don't you try to think? Yes, you can really. Huh? You really. Let's go. Rise insurance and income. Uh, I think I don't know Okay. Will? Um, that's what I said. Okay. It should be better for lenders, right? Because they're getting paid back a more valuable dollar because it, it buys more at this. Purchasing power. Huh? Good job, Ben. Good job, Bobby. I have no idea, freaking idea what this is supposed to. Uh, yes, sir. I, I would explain by saying that the interest rates are lower and therefore they're getting paid, rather, inflation is lower, so they're getting paid with a dollar with better purchasing power. Um, and also, you know, if you want to do nominal equals real plus inflation, um, say nominal is five. Inflation was three, real would be two. Nominal is going to stay the same. Inflation, say, goes down to one. Uh, you can see real. So that's all about purchasing power. So you can say purchasing power increase. Okay. <coughs> all right. Quick multiple choice. I didn't even put it in your notes. I'm just going to get a hand raised here. Short run Phillips curve shows an inverse relationship between 
Give you 45 seconds. All right. All right. Since Schwab gave it away, who has the E as an Ellen? Schwab, you ready? Never said E. Schwab, you ready? Who has C as in Dogwood? C as in Caroline? He has a broccoli. He was between me and nah. <laughs> All right. An increase in aggregate demand will cause which of the following? Give you a minute. An increase in aggregate demand will cause which of the following? None of my desired answers are out there. Actually, I don't think you guys have passed I was trying to get my head. <laughs> All right. Lorenzo, are you feeling this? All right, guys. What? All right, if aggregate demand shift would shift right, what would happen on the Phillips curve? Don't even look up there. Just tell me, if aggregate demand oh, shifts right, what happens on the Phillips curve? You slide the opposite. All right, so an increase in aggregate demand, which would be a shift right, what's the best answer there? Hey, you kind of said it. Who's going to help Lorenzo out here? Yeah. Hey. But Lorenzo, what, why, why did you feel A? Because you said you, you said I'll slide the opposite. Okay. The movement is like a slug. Is that what you're going to do? I for I said the word of the word. A little harder. Oh. oh. Uh, there, there is your slide. I was looking for slide. All right. The term. All right. An increase in a government budget deficit is most likely to result in an increase of which of the following? I'll give you a minute. <laughs> Andrew, any, I'm not asking the answer here. An increase in the budget deficit will shift what in the loanable funds right? Guys, <clears throat> I think budget deficit would be supply because you're saving less. All right, who's got an answer for this one? It's going to be real interesting because it's loanable funds. All right, have a great day. Yeah,